An Earthship is defined by Michael Reynolds as a passive solar home that gets its electricity from the sun, its water from the sky, and is made of recycled materials. Earthships are designed to be completely off-grid. Off-grid means there are no utility lines, water lines, or sewer lines connected to it. The main elements that distinguish an Earthship from a conventional house are off-grid solar and wind power, passive solar heating and cooling, innovative catch water, gray water, and black water system recycling, and recycled building materials. Some questions you may need to ask yourself as you watch this video are, are there any aspects of an Earthship that you can incorporate into your own home? How is this building similar to the home you live in? How is it different? How much do you spend on utility bills each month or each year? Imagine living in a house with no utility bills. Let's go through the main parts of an Earthship. First, the water system. A. Catching water from the sky requires as little as 6 inches of rain per year to fill the 3,000 gallon cistern contained in the ground or even inside the house. When it rains, the water is caught by the roof and then filtered by the silt catcher, which removes large debris from the catch water before it enters the cistern. B. The water organization module filters and pumps the catch water to the household fixtures. The water from the cistern first goes to the sink and the shower. The gray water then goes to the planter box to be filtered by the soil and grow plants for the house. After the water has been filtered by the soil, it is used to flush the toilets. Black water from the toilets then makes its way out to the septic system that grows outside plants. By using water efficient appliances and reusing water in creative ways, little water is needed to run one of these kind of homes. These techniques can be used in conventional homes to save water and money. Second is thermal mass. Thermal mass is the capacity of a body or material to store heat. In an earthship, the thermal mass is the walls made from tires packed with dirt. Tire walls create the thermal mass that passively heats and cools the building. These incredibly strong and heavy walls are made out of used car tires filled with dirt then plastered with mud. By mud, I mean a variety of materials ranging from adobe to hand-mixed sand, straw, and clay plaster. You could go down to your local hardware store and pick out anything made to cover outside walls. When the sun hits the wall, it heats them up throughout the day. When light hits the wall, the mass begins to store the heat. The heat dissipates into the wall until the temperature outside the wall becomes lower than the temperature inside the wall. The thermal mass is in a constant battle to equalize itself. So in the winter it is possible to store the energy from the sun to heat your home and water by trapping it in the walls. The walls have to be made of something that is thick enough and dense enough to hold heat. If you're in a tin shed, you have no chance to hold the heat. In fact, it will get rid of any heat or air conditioning you have as quickly as you can possibly produce it. The same but to a lesser degree happens in your home made of modern walls. Third, construction is one of the keys to using thermal mass to its maximal potential. You start with a layer of tires one tire height below the surface. This keeps the base from sliding out or moving under the incredible weight of the walls. I call this the cleat. Each tire is stacked halfway across the tire below it. This is called lacing. When you lace tires together, they form a lock where the tires meet, making a system of interlocking tires that weigh three to 400 pounds per tire. This makes a wall that weighs thousands of pounds by the time you're done. The front of the building is basically one big window. The front of the building faces south if you're in the northern hemisphere and north if you're in the southern hemisphere. This allows the thermal mass to store heat from the sun inside the building. In the winter, the sun is low in the sky, allowing more sun to reach the walls and store more heat. In the summer, the sun is high in the sky, which then only hits the plants in the window. This is where the gray water is filtered from the planter boxes. Interior walls can be made from tires, but they can also be made from other recycled materials. One technique developed for using materials that would normally go to the dump is a can or bottle wall. You can use concrete or sod type material for this. First you put down a layer of cement to create a base for the recycled materials. Then you place bottles about 5 inches apart and all the way down your wall. Then you cover that with more cement, then more bottles and so on. This saves cement or sod and also creates a way for light to travel through the walls and it looks cool. The strength comes from the honeycomb effect created by the placed materials. 
I prefer bottles because cans are able to be recycled more easily with less energy into many more useful products. You can get bottles for free at any bar if you do the cleanup labor. No one will give you their cans for free. Most of the rooms in the house can be made of these materials, including bathtubs, sinks, planter boxes, and shelves. Then you have many options for a roof, but the normal roof is made of beetle kill pines covered with sheet metal to catch rain. This roof will last for years, probably most of your life, and gather water with a minimal amount of maintenance. You will also have operable skylights, which open to provide ventilation, releasing the hot air from the room and pulling the air through convection. Fourth is electricity. The power organization module organizes and distributes AC and DC power collected from solar panels and wind generators. The major components of power to the Earthship are solar panels, about 35 120 watt panels, wind generators, charge controllers, battery bank, and the power organization module. There are many brands and ratings and other stuff to look at when you put this together, but that's another show. Fifth is the location. The location of these Earthships can be any place on the planet. Earthships use renewable resources for day-to-day -day living. If you were to use any one of these techniques in a conventional home, we would save so much energy it would take our country out of debt.